So now we're going to talk about a good drill that I love to do for the lower half and getting into our backside. It's called the step back drill. What this is going to do is going to teach you when you load how to properly get into your back leg and your back hip to maximize when we get separation of what this does. T placement, again, it's just like when we had the hands of speed trainer on the nose stride. We want the T kind of middle away, kind of right on the front of the plate. Set up in the box is going to be the same. We're going to get up here, normal setup, but instead of doing it from this position, we're going to step forward two to three inches because we're actually going to be stepping back a little bit, and that's going to make us back where we need to be when we do start adding the swing. So the first one, this is the step back with no swing. All this is is going to be a movement to teach you how to feel that backside when you load, and that's very important for any level from youth ball to the big leagues is we have to have a proper load and load this back hip. So in this drill, the step back with the no swing, all I'm going to do is basically lift my back foot off and step back an inch or two and engage my backside. It's almost like doing a one-legged squat if I was going to go down, but I'm going to basically pinch this back hip. So if you watch me, I'm just going to go here, stop, here, stop. I am feeling when I'm here, I'm feeling this back hip pressure on, on my hip flexor, my quad, and here, if you watch me when I do this, you can drive a rod straight from here to my foot. This is going to put you in a position to maximize when you drive that knee and then drive your hip. Right. So now I'm going to demonstrate this move. I've never done this before, so Wes is going to coach me through it to make sure I'm doing it right. All right. So I'd get my normal setup right here, move up just a little bit, and all I want to focus on is just loading this back hip. So we step. Is that about right? Mm-hmm. So right here. So if you notice when he did that, go ahead, Trey, and do it again. Right there, he could draw a line straight down through it. Before he took his front foot forward, that becomes a separation. When he loaded this back hip, straight line. He could draw a straight line. That shows me he is in his quad and his back hip. Okay, if you feel like you're doing this and you're off balance, you're probably not pinching the back hip enough. So it, you don't want to load into the back leg, show him with a straight leg. You don't want to just step back and stay straight. There's no flexion in the back leg. There's no pinching of the back hip. We want to engage all those muscles when we load. So therefore, when he goes back here, you see now, you know, before we get to separation, he is in his backside. There's no swing with this drill. All this is is for the player to feel what the backside feels like when I load. So therefore, if you don't do the step back tray, just do your normal load, he's going to do the same thing and feel the same thing. So therefore, after you do a lot of reps with the step back, your normal load is going to become the back hip and the back quad and done the proper way. And whenever I do this, I feel all that tension like straight on this back leg. Like my quad is flexed. You can see my, mm -hmm. my quad muscles right here. Yeah, popping out. But uh, <laughs> so whenever I do this, when I step I back. I did say there's no ego in the cage. <laughs> so whenever you do this, when you do that step back, I feel all that pressure, all that weight right here on this back leg. And I feel like I'm just ready to fire it right there. Yep. You notice he's not jumping back or stepping back. He's basically just picking the back foot up. It might move back an inch or two depending on the player, but all he wants to feel is engaging this. And you know, for me, players teaching the load, if I just tell them the load, they just go backwards. So basically all they do is just do this. They're not pinching that back hip. You want to pinch into that back hip. So this motion here is going to teach the kid to understand what that means. And that's something that I used to do personally is my weight would just go back. Yes. I never really sunk down and got into that back hip. I would just move my weight back and move my weight forward. Well, I want you to think about it like this. If we just go back to forward, you're going to put balls in play and you're going to hit, but you're not going to maximize your power. Yeah. You're not going to be able to control your legs as much. I want you to think like a cat pouncing, getting ready to jump on something. They sink into their legs like this. They don't squat and jump. They sink and jump. No difference. I'm going to sink into my back hip. 
Now I'm going to get ready to stride. That's how you maximize that back side in the load. So now we're going to do the step back and add the swing to it. So he's going to do the, you know, proper setup on the plate, like he said, maybe like, you know, two inches up in the box more than he's uh, used to. He's going to step back, engage the back hip, and then he's going to fire from there. Yep. So as the player, as I build my <clears throat> stance for this, since we are doing the step back, I'll get in my normal stance right here with the, the point of the T about the middle of my body, and then I'll move up just a hair. So then we get our stance here. Let's step back. Good. Now this drill can be done with more effort than the no stride because now we're driving this back hip just like we taught in the earlier drills of the proper way with the knee and the hip. He is adding, firing the back side with the swing. So you should have more effort in this swing. Good. You see how he's controlling that step back, staying engaged in his back leg as he strides and then he fires, everything's working together, in sync, and that's gonna play at any level. So that's kind of what I'm thinking of is, whenever I do that step back, I'm controlling that weight, and whenever my front foot hits, like I said, when the heel plants is when that swing starts. Yes. So I plant the heel, and then it's the same as always, it's knee, then hips, and then the hands follow through. Yes. So as we're doing this drill, we want to make sure that we have the proper sequence of the lower half firing first to allow the hands to stay inside the ball. We don't want to see the hands coming out first because then you're just going to roll over. 